In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how you can draw a three-dimensional maze using two-point perspective. So let's get started. We'll start with a regular old sheet of drawing paper. This is 80 pound drawing paper. And first we'll need to establish the horizon line. We're just gonna let the top edge of the paper be the horizon line for this drawing. And since we're gonna be working in two point perspective, we'll need a couple of vanishing points. We'll let each one of the top corners of the paper be the vanishing points. Pretty simple, right? Okay, now the next thing we need to do is establish the corner of the maze. And this is going to be the main corner of the front edge of the maze. It's just going to be a vertical line that we draw. We'll establish the height of the maze when we draw this line. Once we've got that initial corner, then we'll draw lines to each one of the vanishing points from each of the tips of that corner. Now you may have noticed that I placed the initial corner pretty far down the picture plane. This is so that when we start drawing the details of the maze, the viewer can actually look inside of it. If you put the corner too high up in the picture plane, you're going to find that it's, it's hard to see some of the details within the maze. And then the viewers won't be able to figure out the maze and interact with your drawing. So we're going to draw lines from each end of that corner to each one of the vanishing points. The vanishing point on the right and the vanishing point on the left. Now we're going to make a decision on where our maze is going to end in space. So to accomplish where the endpoints of the maze are, we'll just draw a couple of vertical lines further back on those lines of perspective that we drew in the last step. Now we need to connect the ends of those lines to the opposite vanishing point. So the top of the end on the right will go to the left vanishing point and the top of the end on the left will go to the right vanishing point. Now we'll also go ahead and make the walls of our maze look a bit thicker, again by drawing additional lines using the vanishing points as a reference. We'll do this with the front edge of the overall shape of the maze and the back edge as well. Next we'll draw lines to indicate the bottom edge of the back wall of the maze. These lines of course will extend from the bottom of the edges to the opposite vanishing point and where they intersect in the middle will indicate the location of the back corner of the maze. Now of course any inconsistencies that happen along the way will tidy up with a quick eraser. Now I'm just going to continue to create a series of boxes within the original box that we've made, following the same step-by-step -step process of establishing the corner and then drawing lines to the vanishing points. We'll also continue to establish where each one of these boxes end, and then we'll draw lines to the opposite vanishing point, establishing the point where they intersect, creating the back edge. And as I go along, I'll continue to make each box appear three-dimensional by adding additional lines to give it a little bit of volume. Now, right in the center of the maze, I'm going to add a wall, and we'll add some more walls in just a moment. But I'm just going to use the vanishing point on the left as a reference to uh, decide on the direction that that wall will go. And then I'll use the vanishing point on the right to establish the line that indicates where that wall ends. And then, of course, we need to draw a vertical line to indicate the edge of the wall as well. And I'm going to go ahead and add one more of those walls just inside the center portion of the maze. 
Now we'll need to add an entrance to the maze so our viewers know where they can go into the maze to figure it out. So I'm just going to use two point perspective here again to create an entrance. First, I'll just draw the basic shape of a doorway using the vanishing point on the right and then vertical lines. And then I'll use the vanishing point on the left and then vertical lines to indicate a little bit of volume there. Now we're ready to add some walls that will block and direct the viewers through the maze. And again, we're just going to use the lines of perspective here, or rather the vanishing points to create lines of perspective. Now, remember, if you're creating a maze like this one, there's only three choices of directions that you can make your lines go. They can be vertical in the case of corners and edges, or they can go to the vanishing point on the right or the vanishing point on the left. Those are your only three choices. So if you're trying to figure out what direction you should make the line, try going to the vanishing point on the right. If that doesn't feel right, try the vanishing point on the left, or maybe it should be a vertical line. We're going to continue this process to create areas within the walls that will block the viewer from going certain directions through the maze. We'll also add an exit door while we're at it, just as we did with our entrance door. Now that we've got all those blockages in place, we're going to go ahead and create some openings so the viewer can move through different sections of the walls that we've already created. Here again, we'll use our vanishing points to create our lines of perspective. Now as you create these openings, test every once in a while and make sure that your viewer can actually get through your maze. You can make it as challenging or as easy as you like. Ultimately, it's the aesthetic quality of the image that we're after anyway. Now, I didn't start out with a plan on how my maze would be arranged when I started the drawing. So as I'm adding walls and openings to the maze, I'm deciding how the viewer might interact with it. And actually, that's part of the fun that comes along with doing this drawing exercise. Once you've got all your walls and openings drawn, you've got the basic structure for your maze in place. It's now time to think about the light and adding value. So we'll need to consider the light source or the area in which light is originating from. In this case, this will produce areas of coarse shadow or dark value on the right side of the walls of the maze. It'll produce areas of mid-tone or middle value on the left side of the walls of the maze and it will produce areas of highlight on the top portions of the walls. It will also create areas of cast shadow behind the walls on the right side of each one of the corners. So let's go ahead and start adding the value to the drawing to really bring this together. I'm going to start with an HP pencil and I'm going to start by adding value to all the areas of core shadow. I'm going to work slowly here and add the value using small circles with the pencil. This will help to create a smooth gradation of value. Then it's time to move on to the mid-tone areas. Again, I'll stick with the HB pencil here, just putting less pressure on the pencil as I add the value. Of course, for the highlighted areas, we'll leave those alone, but we need to address the cast shadows. So again, we're going to create areas of gradated value behind the walls on the right side. Now, these shadowed areas will flow in perspective, so we'll use the vanishing point on the left side to continue those lines out to help us understand the overall shape of the cast shadows. Now it's time to push the range of value in the drawing, producing additional contrast. So I'll go back with a softer graphite pencil which produces a darker mark and address all the areas of coarse shadow and cast shadow again, making the value a bit darker, extending the range of value, and increasing the contrast in the drawing. To push the contrast even further, in areas of the drawing I'm going to accentuate some of the edges of the maze. I'll use an HB pencil here because I don't want the softer graphite to be overpowering and produce too much contrast. I won't use the ruler for all of the lines that I accentuate here. I do want there to be a bit of an organic feel to the drawing and not feel too stiff. I'll clean up a few of the gradations of value in the end 
and erase all of the stray marks that might have happened on the surface, including the lines of perspective. And now our 3D maze drawn with two-point perspective is complete. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more about drawing and painting, why not check out our comprehensive membership program at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes great video courses, weekly live instruction, downloadable eBooks, and even lesson plans for teachers. Just click on the button in the corner to learn more now. You can also get three free course modules from our program. One from the Secrets to Drawing, one from Pastel Landscape Mastery, and a third from the Oil Painting Master Series. Each module includes a video and an ebook. To learn more about how you can get your free course modules, again, just click on the button in the corner. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel so you can get access to all of the new videos as we publish them. Thank you so much for watching, and I wish you the best of luck in your artistic journey.